Good morning and welcome to Gartmoor and the Clivey Parish Churches. Today we look at the authority of Jesus, an authority that was rooted in humility and in grace. Let us worship God together. And so let us bring our prayers to God. Let us pray. God of the source, we give you thanks that from the beginning you have been part of creation, inextricably woven into its story, feeling its glory, knowing its potentials and possibilities. Jesus, the sharer, we give you thanks that through your humble incarnation you became part of the human story inextricably woven into its experiences, feeling its delights and dilemmas, knowing its potentials and possibilities. Spirit the Shaper, we give you thanks that throughout all stories of human history, you have been part of the arc towards justice, inextricably woven into its trajectory, feeling its freedoms and frustrations, knowing its potentials and possibilities. Triune God, source, sharer and shaper, we give you thanks that though we may not understand you fully, yet you understand us and our stories and help us discover and explore their potential and enter and engage with their possibilities. O oh God of mercy, you intended the world to be a place of provision and plenty for all. We confess that sometimes in our attitudes or actions, we have taken more than we need at the expense of others. Forgive us and by your spirit, help us as we try to live differently. O oh God, you intended the world to be a place of fairness and flourishing for all. We confess that sometimes in our attitudes and actions, we have lived as though we alone mattered. Forgive us and by your spirit, help us to try to live differently. O oh God, you intended the world to be a place in which all play their part in the health and wholeness of creation. We confess that sometimes in our attitudes and actions, we have avoided our responsibilities or prevented others from fulfilling theirs. Forgive us, and by your Spirit, help us as we try to live differently. O oh God, the life and words of your Son, his compassion and care for others, even as he himself was dying, assure us of the generous depths of your forgiveness and of its restorative power. Help us now, through the energy of your Holy Spirit, to love and live differently that we and our world might become all that you intended. These are prayers we offer in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 21, reading from verses 23 to 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Amen. Is it any wonder then, in the light of all Jesus' activity, that we read the opening words of our passage today from Matthew's Gospel? When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus was clearly a threat to the religious and social leaders of his day. He was exhibiting enormous and miraculous powers. The crowds were enthralled by him. His courage and boldness in confronting the institutions of power was astounding. And of course, they would want to question his authority. And the questioning comes out of the security they felt in their own authority. They were the leaders. The chief priests were in a lineage, a spiritual line going back as far as Moses. But Jesus has no intention at this point of getting into some abstract and conceptual debate about the nature of his authority in an attempt to prove his authority is greater than theirs. Instead, he decides quite cunningly to ask them a question that will cause them to reflect on the true nature of authority. Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you the authority and by whose authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? Now, this was a tough question for the religious leaders to answer, as Matthew rightly points out, because they, no matter how they answer, someone is going to be upset. If they agreed that John the Baptist's ministry came from God, then Jesus would simply say to them, why didn't you listen to him and follow him? But if they said that his ministry was not from God, then the crowds would have turned on them because John the Baptist was very much favoured by the population. There was no way that they could win this argument, win this question. So they had to come up with the answer, we don't know. They were rendered speechless and defenceless in the face of a very simple question from Jesus. 
And in that moment, the religious leaders were unmasked for who they truly were. They claimed authority and power and privilege. But their chief concern, let's be honest, was to protect their standing in society and to protect their reputations. And of course, it's an encounter that gives a lesson for all of us who are religious leaders or politicians or leaders in society. Those who hold positions of authority. The claims of the gospel are intense. And all of us in political and spiritual leadership are called to moments of decision that will have profound impact on us and on other people for the future. Are we prepared to stand up for what is right, for what is true in the eyes of God and to live out our ministries by the standards of the gospel? Spiritual and political leadership demands courage to do what is right, often at the expense of personal gain and popularity. But the leaders that Jesus was addressing were unable to recognise the authority of Jesus, to challenge them in this way for the simple reason that he was acting out of a form of authority that they had never witnessed before. For them, authority came with a title, with respect in society, with wealth and prestige, with the ability to make decisions that would unquestionably obey and with the weight of history on their side. But that was not the type of authority that Jesus was modelling to them as the authority of the kingdom of God. The authority of Jesus was of a completely different order altogether. The authority of Jesus was worked out in the welcoming of sinners and prostitutes. The authority of Jesus was worked out in his welcoming of little children. The authority of Jesus was worked out in his welcoming of the outcasts and those on the margins of society. And ultimately, the authority of Jesus was worked out in a life of service, not ruling. A life hallmarked by betrayal and personal sacrifice rejection, torture and a criminal's death on a cross. That is where the authority of Jesus lay, not in some sort of power game that brought with it prestige and wealth and the respect of the people. And the religious leaders had never seen anything like it before and had no idea how to respond to it. In the light of this passage, we need to remember that our ministry and mission in Gartmore and Baclivy will not be hallmarked by wealth or power or prestige or being at the centre of everything, but instead will be hallmarked by service and welcoming those on the margins, welcoming the little children. We should be a community of sacrifice and vulnerability where those on the margins find a home. That is what authority in the kingdom of God is like. And that is what a truly Christ-like church looks like. The challenge to us in this passage is the extent to which we are prepared to develop our gifts and positions in this community, to love and to serve those in need rather than seek prestige and honour for ourselves. That is the ultimate value that underpins the work of God's vineyard. And as Jesus goes on to outline in the second part of this passage with the parable. And in this creation time, there is a mandate too. In the wake of the pandemic that we have been living through in these last months, we can now add to this how dangerous it might be for us to return to the way things always were. Change is inevitable. We get used to it or we perish. We're not even the same people or the same church that we were at the beginning of this year. Power and privilege in religion as in politics can entrench the status quo and hinder the vital responsiveness that goes with the leadership of any sustainable society. In recent years, the church has learned to talk positively about creation and about stewardship as though Sometimes our fellow creatures are mere property that we take care of. But the science is sufficiently clear, authoritative and prominent. 
If you want to survive in a time of crisis, as David Attenborough said so recently, he suggests that the status quo has to go. And yet with movements like eco-congregation and eco-church, the sacrificial lead is being taken. And this mandate is not just of human origin, but from God. It is a covenant to be responsible as the head of a long-standing family business might be, rather than just a mere employee. For what we are a part of in creation, the beauty and the wonder and the vulnerability of our planet. May we ponder this passage from the Gospel of Matthew. May we wonder at the authority of Jesus, authority that is made perfect in weakness. Authority that is humble. Authority that reflects God's love and grace. Now and always. Amen. And so in this creation time, let us bring our prayers to God. Let us pray. Loving God, our Father, we thank you for the creation which you have given us, for the beauty around us, for this autumnal season and the changing of colours. We thank you for all that you provide for us. And we look forward to the harvest in the days to come. Loving God, in this season, we pray for your church, that we may tell the world your story of love, that we might care for your creation, that we might change our own actions to save this planet for the welfare and good of all. Loving God today, in the beauty that surrounds us, we pray indeed for those who are need, those known to us, who are in need of our prayers, for the ill, in hospital or at home. We pray for those who are anxious or worried. We pray for those who are fearful again of this pandemic, fearful of another lockdown and fearful of missing family and friends. Loving God, we pray for your church in this parish, that we might go out in the authority of Jesus, truly in humility and in service, to live out the gospel 
by our words and by our actions. Loving God, we pray that you will hear these our prayers. Not only the prayers spoken, but the unspoken prayers of all of our hearts, wherever we are this day. For you know us better than we know ourselves, and you know our need. Hear our prayers, in Jesus' name. Amen. May the God whose names are complex and many, but whose nature is constant, the one whose story is complex but whose purpose is clear, enable us to deepen in love, develop in understanding and be determined in action. Wherever you are today, may you go in love and in peace and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen.